Hello everyone, long time no see. I know I have been missing from YouTube for over two months. It was really because of all the school closings and it just affected me in so many different ways. So I had to give myself some time. I am going to slowly come back little by little and I'm going to post more videos. The video you're about to see was actually the video that was the last classroom vlog before schools closed. So March 9th through the 13th, the 13th of course I wasn't in the classroom because I had to go to physical therapy because of my knee. If you recall, I had an injury in the classroom. I fell and I injured my knee. I'm doing much better with that now, but at the time it was really, really bad. I was only able to be with my students that week until Thursday, so I wasn't even with them the last day that they were in the classroom. So that's something that still affects me today and I miss them so, so much and they, they have told me that they miss me too. They just miss being in the classroom. That's the video you're going to see right now and and just stay tuned for more videos that I'm going to post. I want to share a little bit more about how distance learning has gone for me. I want to share some of my best strategies that I have found and what kind of helped me through it all. So just stay tuned for those videos. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this last classroom vlog, vlog inside the classroom for the 2019-2020 school year. Here you go. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a 4th grade teacher in South Florida. Welcome to the second week of March in our classroom. I'm just gonna just jump right into it and show you the agenda for today. Starting off with writing this morning, we were continuing going over our opinion writing with the chocolate, is it healthy or not? We finished gathering our evidence, the students created a plan, and they started their introduction to their essay. Now, a lot of them didn't finish, so I assigned it for homework, so they just finished that introduction paragraph, and we can jump into the body tomorrow. We didn't have time for social studies, unfortunately, so we are moving it over to tomorrow. We went over line plots, and I had the students watch these two different videos. One of them was from Number Rock on YouTube, and the other one was from Flocabulary. Here's a clip of that. But we rock math every week of every quarter. Uh. you're gonna need then to represent each item you place a dot add a label and a title now you got a line plot then for reading we read this passage titled me as a mountain which is a metaphor poem and the students took their spelling pretest. we did not have time for science so we're also moving that to tomorrow for writing i went ahead and i created a brace map to remind the students what our introductory paragraph was made up of the opinion one so it's made up of an opener which is a general statement about the overall topic and a topic sentence which states their opinion about that particular topic this was the passage that we read in reading and again we went over our spade reading comprehension strategy we looked at the structure of the poem it's a free verse poem but it's also a metaphor poem so we went ahead and annotated and we wrote our notes etc and the students had these three questions to answer in the back on main idea and theme theme is the main strategy or skill that we're going over in reading for this particular unit as for me i'm still wearing my knee brace i do have a follow-up appointment tomorrow and yeah i feel better i'm not using the cane today so that's all good all right so i have to get going because i have to take my son to an appointment and i will see you tomorrow tuesday Hello everyone, we're finally here on Tuesday after school and I'm just gonna give you the rundown and actually say 
I was really riding the struggle bus today because I don't know what's in the air. Maybe it's because spring break is in a week and a half away because it took so long to get things done today and some things needed to get pushed back because we spend so much time doing other things. Let me just show you what I was talking about. So we started the day with our chocolate opinion essay. I'll show you what we were working with that. And then after that, we had recess and that kind of took some time as well then after recess we went over the introduction to topic five but we didn't get into the actual lesson for natural resources so that gets pushed to tomorrow we did do our mid-chapter checkpoint in math but we didn't get to do that metric measurement lesson so definitely tomorrow and because we spent so much time in our writing because i really wanted them to do as much as they could we didn't have time for reading so we're pushing that for tomorrow and of course, we didn't have time for social studies. Now for writing, I drew this little tree or this big tree actually, I should say, on the board. And this is our writing tree. Tree is our acronym that represents what the students need to have in each body paragraph. So we start with a transition, followed by the reason or idea that we're explaining in that paragraph. And then that is backed up by evidence and elaboration. So I wrote some reminders and I had the little bird on the side said, but don't forget to elaborate your evidence. And the butterfly said, and use as much elaboration and evidence as needed. So yeah, it's a cute little illustration for the students to remember. And let me show you how we set up our papers today. So again, like I showed you yesterday, this is what we were working with. So the students had their introductory paragraph from yesterday. They had their articles and they had their evidence which is underneath this paper this is the paper that i want to show you for today but this is their evidence that they were collecting since last week and on one side of the evidence is their writing plan so i gave them another one of these big sheets of paper and then i printed these lined sheets of paper landscape on my computer and they're actually writing their essay in this large big sheet of paper as you can see, they gave it a title, and I have my introduction followed by my first body paragraph and the first sentence of my second body paragraph, which is my transition and my recent slash idea. So I'm looking forward to see how this comes together tomorrow or maybe Thursday as the students wrap up this chocolate opinion essay. So that's pretty much what we ended up doing today, Tuesday. I'm actually getting ready to leave because I have a follow-up appointment with a doctor regarding my knee, which right here I'm wearing a dress today so it's easier. And here's my knee with a little bruise there and stuff. And my other knee has a little bit of bruise right there. But overall, I am feeling better. I feel like I can walk a little better on it. And on Friday, this coming Friday, I do start my physical therapy. So anyway, let's go ahead and move us on to Wednesday. Hello everyone, we are now on Wednesday and I'm at the end of the day and I just want to go over our very short agenda for today and show you what we ended up doing. We started the day with a two hour writing practice test that I'm going to show you in a moment. Then they had Spanish lunch in math. We went over metric measurement and that's why we have over here this acronym which I showed the vocabulary video on as well. <laughs> Basically, it's just to remind the students the prefixes for all the metric units. So, kin, Henry died, base. Drinking chocolate milk, which represents kilo, hecto, deca, base will be meter, liter, or gram, deci, centi, milli, and then I show the students the representation. So this is the decimal part, and this is the whole number part. Well, this is one, and this is ten, hundred, and thousand. We went over what each of these prefixes meant as well. And this is just converting 43 centimeters will be 43 hundredths of a meter, six decimeter will be six tenths of a meter and so forth we were working with that over here as well looking at how we write it as a fraction and how we write it as a decimal and then in science we were reading our lesson on natural resources and how energy is converted from chemical energy to electrical energy so yeah for writing we had an opinion practice essay 
So the students first had to look at the prompt and unwrap it. So here we go with our APT, as easy as one, two, three, one circle the essay keyword, two, underline the topic, three is to tell me if it's a one part or a two part prompt. And then from that, we can determine the audience, purpose, and task, which I have the students rewrite it in the form of a question. So then after that, they read their sources. This one happened to have three sources. The first one was pretty much talking about both sides, kids and after school sports. This one was on how grades come first and how students should have good grades before they are allowed to play in after school sports. And then this one was how sports are separate from school and talking about why students should be allowed to play after school sports and not just be required to only have good grades. So then afterwards, I showed the students three different ways they could have tackled their planning sheet because I don't want them to spend too much time writing. Obviously, they could write it this way. They do have two hours. The first hour, they can definitely spend time gathering their evidence. So the first hour, they have to read the prompt, read the sources two times, and then gather their evidence. I gather my evidence first in a T-chart. School should require good grades versus school should not require good grades. I wrote the sources on the side, so I gathered the evidence for each side in a T-chart. And then here, grades come first, mostly focused on this part of the opinion. And sports are separate from school, mostly focused on this part of the opinion. That one I had to continue to the back because I had more evidence. And then I did my bubble, which is what my body paragraphs will be about. So the reasons to support my opinion. So I wanted to go ahead and show students another way they could have done it, which is after they read the sources the first time, they could have already had an idea what their opinion was. So they could just write what their opinion is and why they feel that way, gathering the evidence from each source that only supports their opinion. And then again, on the back, doing their bubbles to go ahead and talk about the reasons that support that opinion. But then another way they could have done it so that it's not so, so much writing is using a multi-flow map. So you have your stage, which is the cause, in this case, your opinion, and then all the effects as to why that opinion is what it is. So that's another way that I show the kids. And then the S1 is source one, S2 will be source two, so that they know where the evidence is coming from. And then again, the bubbles on the back. So that pretty much is what we ended up doing for today's writing test. But I also show them a couple of other resources on PowerPoint. One of the PowerPoints was all these model paragraphs to show different ways they could have started their introduction for that essay. So I went over three different introductions. And again, this one is for school should not require students to get good grades. But then I also gave three different introductions on the opposing opinion on how schools should require students to get good grades, just to show students how they could have possibly tackled their introduction and making sure they also use words from the prompt, like schools require or not require good grades, etc. And then I show them an example of a body paragraph for the opinion of schools should not require good grades for students to participate in after school sports. And I went ahead and I did use the color coding that we've been using. So yellow is the transition, the green is my reason slash idea, which is the transition plus the reason, which is part of our tree acronym, makes up the topic sentence for this body paragraph. And then all the other sentences are key details to support that main idea. So my orange is my elaboration, my blue is my evidence, the way that I've been doing it, just to show the students how they could tackle that. And then I went ahead and I showed them different examples of how they could have completed their conclusion paragraph. So I have three different examples for the opinion that schools should not require good grades. So here's one, two, and three. And then I have three examples for the opinion that schools should require good grades. So this is one, two, and three. So I did have some time to go over that so students have a better idea of that. I also went over my PowerPoint where it goes over what APT123 is, which is how I have my students unwrap their prompt. And then after I did that, I used the bike sharing program prompt that they had earlier this year as part of the district baseline in November. And this one is an opinion piece, 
but it goes over APT123. So one, circle the essay keyword. In this case, it's opinion. Two, underline the topic. I told the students, usually it's right after that keyword. And then three, ask if it's a one part or a two part prompt. And this one happens to be a one part prompt. Then after that, you do a little box with APT. A is for audience. If the prompt doesn't tell you who you're writing to, then automatically it's a teacher so that you know that this is academic writing. P is purpose, which is connected to that essay keyword, which is why it's in red. And T is for task, which is connected to the topic, which is why it's also in green. And this one, again, it's rewritten as a question. So in this case, will a bike sharing program work in my community? So that's what I went ahead and went over with the students today in writing. So that basically was the bulk of what we did today, just three little things, not including Spanish or lunch because today is Wednesday and it's a short day. So now I'm getting ready to go home in like one minute <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow, Thursday. Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday. So I'm coming to you at the end of the day. Today has been a much more productive day than yesterday or the day before. I can't remember which day it was. It was the day before where we didn't get to a lot of things, but there were some things that definitely needed to get moved for tomorrow or for next week actually, because I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. I'm going to my physical therapy appointment. It's the first one and it was like right smack in the middle of the day. So I am taking a day tomorrow and I wanted to make sure that the students had enough time to complete their growth check for iReady. So we asked for a double booking in the media center for our computer time. So instead of our usual 40 minutes, we were there for an hour and 20 minutes. So the students were working on that. The majority of them, I think, finished their math growth check and there's like maybe half that finished their reading. So that's really good. And I was able to do individual one-on-one -on -one conferences with the students. Now, after school, we had an emergency faculty meeting because I'm sure by by now you know that the coronavirus is now a world pandemic so all the districts all the cities are taking precautions with that so we met so that we know what to do in case there's a possibility not that they're saying that there is now But in case there's the possibility that schools do close for a certain amount of time, how are we going to do the distance learning? So there's going to be a lot of online learning that the students will do if that comes to be. But we're not there yet. We're just doing preparations. So yeah, we had that after school. So right now I just want to give you a rundown of what we did today. We started the day with writing and I spent so long providing specific writing feedback for each of my students. I'm gonna let you know exactly what I ended up doing. And yeah, I think I went a little overboard and by a little, I mean a lot. But I thought that it was important for the students to get that feedback from me so that they know what are the areas of strength and what are the areas they need to improve on. So on the board, I did write the writing rubric that the state uses with the three domains and what is considered proficient and what is considered not proficient so that they know what their scores mean also. And then uh, from that, I knew I had to do a mini lesson on how to plan. So I had the students recreate their plan for that essay that they took the two hour practice yesterday and also redo and revise their entire introduction because I saw that across the board. So I show the students exactly how they can easily write an introduction that addresses the topic. So let me go ahead and take you to the agenda so I can show you. So here's our agenda. As you can see, we started with the writing feedback. I even gave them an inspirational speech to get them to believe in themselves and just take the feedback that I give them as tools so that they can improve and do better. We went over how to plan and they did that and then revised their introductions. Now, this is what I was talking on the board. So PFO is purpose, focus, and organization. EE is evidence and elaboration and C is for conventions. So a four or three along with here for both of these categories would be proficient, but a two or one would be not proficient. For conventions, a two is proficient, but a one or zero is not proficient. These two domains don't have zeros as scores. 
Now, I also broke down their two-hour tasks so that they have more of an idea how to organize their time because I did see some students struggle with that a little bit. So I told them they should take about the first five minutes to unwrap their prompt. Then the following 45 minutes will be to read all the sources twice and annotate and start to gather evidence, which they're going to use to create their plan, which should take them about 10 minutes or less. So these three things right here make up the first hour. So the second hour, the first 45 minutes, they need to go ahead and write their essay. And the last 15 minutes, they should revise and edit their essay. So let me go ahead and show you more about the writing feedback I gave to the students. So here is the sheet that I created. And at the top, what I'm covering is the student's name, but it has to date the type of essay, the topic, and then I put the domain one, two, and three. So these are the specific strengths and areas for improvement. I type these up individually for each student. So this is their individual feedback for each of these domains and the overall score that I gave them. Really love how this form came out and the students were really appreciative of the information that they were able to learn about their writing as a result of this feedback form. So definitely love this. And then of course they went ahead and did their writing plan. This is just my example for that particular topic and they revised their introductions for that essay. And this is another one that I came up with live as they were writing, I was writing, which is something that I like to do as well so that they can see some examples of what they can do. Moving down our agenda, we continued with writing after lunch, then we went to the computers, and then they worked on their Florida Natives project, which some teams still need to finish. I have two teams that completely finish, and three that need to finish. And then we ended the day with some poems from the main selection that we were reading from Wonders and we had to move the selection test. We didn't get time for math and science, so that definitely needs to be moved for later. All right, so let me quickly show you what I am planning on leaving the students tomorrow while I'm not here. These are my lesson plans for tomorrow. I outlined the entire day. I'm basically starting the whole day with this writing practice that I'm leaving them. These are articles that I got a couple years ago from Scholastic Magazine. I believe it was Scholastic News. So this one has three sources on whether video games are good or not. And here are the other two sources. It comes with questions, reading questions, but then I created this FSA style prompt for them to write an essay related to video games, whether they're good or bad for students, and then they have their pages to write. So that is what they're going to focus on tomorrow for the bulk of the morning. So I have English language arts here, and then here after lunch, and then again after Spanish, and then they go ahead and work on their math and science that they didn't get to do today, and recess, and of course their behavior management, so the sub can give me feedback on how the students did, along with their comment form. So that is what I'm leaving tomorrow for lesson plans for the sub. All right, so now I'm going to just gather all my things and get going and see what else I need to do because I need to finalize grades. So I am taking some papers home for me to grade since the grading period ends next week and I wanna be on top of that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this second week of March. I know it's only a four day school week for me since tomorrow I'm taking off. But if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.